Yes, ma'am. Okay, I think we are live. Attorney Brown, thank you so much for being here today. Thank My you name. For no problem. My name is Nichelle Womack and I am with the People Connect podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in today. We greatly appreciate you. Today's broadcast is brought to you by Motor Club of America, 20, 91 years in business. And they have memberships that start at $9.95 a month with unlimited emergency side roadside assistance in the US and in Canada. You can learn more by going to bit.ly forward slash roadside info. So I'm so excited about our guest today uh, for being here. Um, Attorney Brown, she is a native New Yorker. She's attended Brooklyn Law School, been in the Maryland and DC area for over 20 years. She's passionate about wills and estate planning, and she's been doing estate planning for over 20 years and has her own private practice currently called E. Brown Law. And so drafting wills and uh, um, uh, POAs, et cetera, can be reached. And she can also be reached, excuse me, by E. Brown at ebrownlaw.com or by phone at 301-352-8960. And POA is power of attorney, okay? So yeah, I meant yeah, to say that when I, uh, when I started saying and I just rambled on there. So welcome, <laughs> Attorney Brown. Thank you for being Thank here today. You. Thank you. Yes. So this information that you're sharing today, I'm so excited to be sharing with the audience. We are live here for the People Connect podcast, but I get a lot of questions about this being a um, real estate broker and insurance broker. And we always talk about this because this is so important in the just taking care of our legacy. Mm -hmm. and so if you can share what is a will uh, to with our audience and why do we need one? Sure. A will or it's also known as a last will and testament is a legally binding written document that sets forth exactly what you want to happen to your assets upon death. So a last will and testament does not come into play until you pass away. And more importantly, it has to be a typewritten document. It's not a handwritten document like you see in the movies. Most states require that the document be um, typewritten and witnessed um, usually by two witnesses. And I just want to say at the outset that every state is different. I'm barred in uh, three, three jurisdictions, New York, Maryland, and the District of Columbia. So I'm going to be speaking mainly about those jurisdictions, but a lot of the premises um, cross the board, but folks should definitely check with a local attorney if they have any specific questions. Awesome. So legal document is not something verbally that someone could say, well, hey, I'm going to leave this for you, leave that. It's concrete when it's written down inside of a will. Is that correct? Yes. Similar to a contract, the contract should be in writing. So your will should be in writing. OK. And who will a will protect when we're talking about a will and we're talking about families or friends or businesses? What is constituted in a will and who does that protect? Okay, so what types of things are the assets in your will? You can put anything in your will that's important to you. Um, of course, people put their real property, timeshares, um, antiques, jewelry, cars, furniture, clothing, whatever you deem to be valuable to you, um, you can put in a will. You don't necessarily have to have millions of dollars to draft a will. Everybody's entitled to draft a will, especially if you have children or people don't think about this, if you're single, not married and no children, you really want a will because you want to say who you want to leave the assets to. So that's really important when you're a single person. A lot of single professional women um, don't think about that. And men, that they really should have a will because they don't have a husband or children. So they really want to specify who they want to leave the, the assets to. That's a great point, because when we think will, we always think of family right. um, and leaving something to them. So single people, too, because I know me personally, when I'm talking to single women about life insurance, they don't even think they need that. <laughs> you know, a lot of times they're like, well, I have no, nothing to leave anybody or nothing, no assets or things of that nature. When that's not necessarily true. So that's a great perspective to bring up that, you know, even if you're single, you need to protect your assets as well. You need to protect your assets because a lot of professionals, and those, a lot of my clients are professionals, doctors, lawyers, dentists, 
um, they do have assets. They have businesses. They have homes. They have bank accounts. They have stocks and bonds. They have timeshares. They have vacation homes. So you definitely want to have a will, even though you're single. Um, it's more important because you don't have the child or the spouse necessarily to leave your assets to. And sometimes people want to leave the assets to their nieces or nephews. And that certainly won't happen without a will. And that's beneficiary per se? Yes. Okay. So the beneficiary, the definition of the beneficiary is the person you want to leave the assets to. And you also brought up a great point as well, because I hear that often, too. Well, I don't have anything to leave. And it, you don't have to be of wealth in order to leave people a ring, you know, that you value, that would be of value to someone else or even a document or something that perhaps maybe you've written uh, your rights to certain things. So I think that's key as well, because we are of the mindset or perhaps maybe we were never taught that when we were younger, growing up in our families, that misinformation of having all those essential tools. And one thing too, that I find, and maybe you can elaborate on this as well, people, is there a certain time to do a will? I mean, when would you advise that someone gets this, get this plan together? Right. Um, just before I go to the time, just going back to what you said, most people have more than a ring. If mm -hmm. you think about it, most people have more than a ring. And a lot of people, especially when you live in the suburbs, um, I live in the suburb of, of uh, one of the suburbs of D.C. here in Maryland. Um, and most people have a house, a condo, a townhouse. Those are assets. Most mm -hmm. people have a car. Most people have bank accounts. Um, so all of those are assets. All of those are things you should be thinking about. Um, your question was, when should you do a will? My answer is it's never too soon. The sooner, the better, because we all know for sure that we are going to pass at some point. And the key is that we don't know when. So it's about being prepared, just like you mentioned life insurance. You want to have a will, just like you want to have life insurance. It's about preparation being orderly um, and having peace of mind. Once you have that will in place, you have peace of mind because you know exactly what your wishes are. You've declared them, you've set them forth, and you know who's going to manage that for you. You also know who's going to get what. You've worked hard to earn the asset, so why not have the final say on who gets it? Exactly. Another question that people always think, um, I think I kind of brought this up to you the other day, talking about beneficiaries on different accounts like life insurance, bank accounts. Should they also put in place a will or does that substantiate enough right there? Well, what I would say is you always want to have a consultation with an attorney. Um, and I do have a checklist on the website. And that is a checklist of the various things you need to think about when you're planning for your will and preparing for your will. So one of the things is that life insurance is not a part of your will. Your life insurance passes outside of your will because you put beneficiaries on that. So the beneficiaries would trump anything you have in the will by operation of law. Same thing with bank accounts. So a lot of people don't know about this, but I counsel my clients that you want to put PODs or pay on death on your bank account. That way, um, that will happen by operation of law. When you pass away, whoever's on that bank account will get that bank account. And the other thing is um, mutual funds, 401ks, IRAs, they also have uh, forms where you can put beneficiaries down. So you should put beneficiaries on anything and everything that you can. Yeah, that is another key. You just highlighted something for me with a bank account. So, you know, yeah, we can always think of that. They don't. I never thought of that. I know I have them for other entities of my of my life and my business, but right. not on the bank account. I mean, you put that beneficiary, the POD point of death, they pay out immediately. Immediately. Mm -hmm. All you need is a death certificate. And that's the beauty of the life insurance and the bank accounts that because oftentimes when people um, pass away, you need money right away right. to handle things. You may need to do the burial. Um, you may need to pay some final bills. You may need to make a, a mortgage payment. So you do need access to cash. So yes, those bank accounts and things with beneficiaries on them, you contact the institution, they send you the form. Normally you will have to have it notarized. You send a certified death record, which is an official one with the seal. Um, and then they will release the funds. 
Now, does that matter if you have like, say, for instance, you have a joint account? Is that the same thing that you need to do that if, if you don't have any beneficiaries, but just joint account with perhaps a spouse or something? If you have a joint account, that automatically goes to the person that you're joint with. Okay. So you don't have, again, that would pass outside of your will because by operation of law, you have a person on there. And by saying they're joint on the account, you are in essence saying that they are the person who will be able to get the entire balance of what's in there if anything should happen to you because you're both equally entitled to the money. Right. That is such a great point. Um, also, just I know you do some estate planning as well. And I know sometimes I've heard people get those two confused, the will and the estate planning when they're totally two different entities. Can you explain the two? The difference between yes. the two? Well, actually, a will is part of your estate planning. Mm -hmm. When people talk about an estate plan, what they are speaking of is three documents, mm -hmm. a last will and testament, your power of attorney and your medical directive or living will. Once you have those three in place, you have an estate plan. So the last will and testament we spoke about, which comes into play when you have passed away, the power of attorney is a document that's in effect while you are alive. When you pass, the power of attorney also passes with you. So it's no longer effective. But the power of attorney is a document, a legal document that allows someone else to act in your place should you become incapacitated. So that can be capacity like dementia, a stroke, um, which is very common these days. People have strokes, young and old, um, heart attack, you know, anything where you are, you're incapacitated and you can't act on your own. You may need someone to go to the bank for you. You may need someone to pay your bills. You may need someone to pay your mortgage, mm -hmm. even something as simple as cable or your cell phone. Those companies won't talk to you if you're not the person. So a power of attorney would allow you to do that too. Is that the same as a living will? No, the living will is the third document and that is a medical document. So often when people go into the hospital or if they're having some sort of a medical procedure, the doctor will ask, do you have a, med a living will or medical directive? Because they want to know if anything should happen, who is the person in charge? Who will make the decisions? So that's one thing that goes into the living will document. The other piece is, if anything should happen, do you want to be on life support? Mm -hmm. So that's a big part of that document as well, because a lot of family members will argue and disagree over that point, you know, whether or not to leave a person on life support. So um, the two things with the living will, one, it's for you because you get to say exactly what your wishes are, whether you want to be on life support but also it's for your family members and your loved ones. So they have peace of mind and they know exactly what you want. They're not wondering, they're not guessing, they're not not wondering, you know, would this person have really wanted that? They know for sure from you exactly what you want. And then they can act comfortably in what is oftentimes an emotional situation. Exactly. And their peace of mind can add, add more information under the circumstances. Right, absolutely. And we also know that we've seen, you know, high profile entertainers such as Prince not have a will. And we say, see all the issues that were attributed to that. Yeah. Um, and, and the fact, I mean, if you have children too, being able to not create that fight. <laughs> not create the fight. Um, also, speaking of celebrities, a lot of times celebrities are taking care of their whole family. A lot of times they're taking care of parents or even siblings. So if you have that situation and let's say you're married um, and you know that you want to continue to pay the mortgage for your mom or leave, you know, some sort of money to take care of your sister or whomever, um, you want to put that in a will because that may not happen. The things you were doing in life, if you have not designated monies to certain people, then that may not continue um, upon passing. So a few lives can be affected and destroyed and devastated if you have not put things in place to make sure that all these various things can continue in your death. Wow. wow. That, that, that is, is powerful, powerful because we've seen that act on, on TV. TV. <laughs> yes. And even in real life situations. Yes, because I've seen um, celebrity situation where the celebrity was taking care of his mother he was married, but estranged from his wife. But because he 
passed away and he was married, the wife got everything. So now the mother he was taking care of for years, and she's accustomed now to a certain standard of living, has nothing. Wow, that's deep. <laughs> and, you know, I think I saw something like that, too, where we really need to update our how often would you say someone should update that? Because things change in our life on a regular basis. And that's exactly when you should update it. I say that people should look at it annually around the new year, you know, dust it off, take a look at it and see if any of the circumstances have changed. If someone has passed away, if you've bought a, a property or gained assets or lost significant assets, if you sold real property, um, you should check all of those things. And if the circumstances have changed, then you should update the will. Right. And Attorney Brown, people don't like talking about this stuff because nobody wants to talk about dying. Right. <laughs> but right. the, the fact that you're doing it in advance literally gives you life because you're at peace. The fact that you're doing it in advance, you're at peace because you're not doing it when you're older or when you may have a medical condition. The other thing is I often compare it to life um, to auto insurance. We don't expect to have an accident. We don't want to have a car accident, but we have the insurance in place for peace of mind. Mm -hmm. And the third thing is you can't stick your head in the sand because we are all going to pass away. Not talking about it and not thinking about it is not going to change the fact that we are going to pass away. So if you know that something's coming, whether it be a birthday you're not looking forward to or a bill that you have to pay, you're not going to ignore it just because you don't want to think about it because it's still going to happen. Exactly. Now, how can you help people? You, you mentioned you have a website, so you may want to share their website so people can go get the um, documents that you have available. Yes. The website is ebrownlegal.com. -E and what I try to do is my goal, I have two goals. One is to make wills affordable and accessible because people think that lawyers are so expensive. I don't have anything. I can't afford it. But a will is very important because it keeps families from fighting and disputing. Any amount of money can cause people to fight. Right. Like they say, money can be the root of all evil and people will fight over a small amount. So you want to keep your family joined together in a time of sorrow. You don't want everything to fall apart because you passed away. So I want people to realize that in the second piece is education. I want to educate people. I do a lot of seminars. So if anybody wants to book me for a seminar, just email me through the website, free seminars for churches and different organizations to let people know that a will is important, a power of attorney, a small document like that, it can really make a difference because if your parent or whomever becomes incapacitated, you have to go to court mm -hmm. to seek guardianship versus if you just had that simple document signed. Like I've had my will since I was 30. Mm -hmm. So you can do that early when you're not sick and because when you need the power of attorney, you need it. Exactly. If you don't have a will and, and something's going on, you wish you had done it. And I have so many people who come to me with their elderly parents and the parent has dementia or the grandparent has dementia. And you cannot do a will if you're not mentally competent. Nor a power of attorney either, right? None of the documents. You have to be mentally competent. Yes. And that's what people don't understand either. I know being in healthcare, you know, people wait until that it's too late. You know, when mom has you know, going even in early dementia, they're going back and forth. Mm -hmm. So they don't necessarily know if they're competent when they're signing. Right. So that is so key. So tell the audience how they can get in contact with you outside your website, because I know you and I came in contact, which I'm so happy <laughs> that we did on IG, our favorite yeah. platform. <laughs> so. I am on Instagram. Same thing at E Brown Legal, E B R O W N L E G A L. Same thing on Facebook. E. Brown Legal. Also, my phone number is 301-352-8960. Again, I'm in the Maryland area in uh, Prince George's County, but I also handle the surrounding counties as well as the District of Columbia. And I do virtual services, virtual legal services. So you can be anywhere in the state of Maryland, New York, or the District of Columbia, and you can get the same legal services face-to-face, -face, but doing it virtually over Skype. Exactly. You have given us a wealth of information. Thank and you. I pray you're, thank you. And <laughs> I pray to 
highlighted me on some things that I need to get, you know, uh, to check out as well. So I know one thing that I am really avid about is empowering not only just people, but more so women, because yeah. I personally have seen, even in my own family, when people pass away, how women don't, when the husband or the spouse passes away, they don't know what to do next. And I don't even, know what to do next. Mm -hmm. And I do, I've been doing this for over 20 years. Um, and I not only do wills, but I do the back end. I do the estate um, when someone passes away. So I've seen the front end, what, you know, when you're preparing, and I've seen the back end when people may not have a will. So I've seen both sides of it. And you're right. It can tear people apart. Um, it can break up families. And like you said, um, a spouse can now be left with nothing because they weren't prepared. Or the other thing about doing a will is you start to um, organize yourself. So a lot of women, especially in the prior generation, our parents and grandparents may not have handled the finances and don't have any idea about what's going on. So when you're drafting your will, you're going to pull out your assets because you're gathering your assets. So you're going to have the conversations and even um, younger uh, generation with the older generation have the conversation, the difficult conversation. Mom, you know, you're getting older or you, you're starting to get dementia or um, you may need some assistance. So you have to have those difficult conversations. And one other group um, that we have to talk about as well is not only the, like you said, women, um, the single woman who is a professional and who has assets, but also the single parent who may not be in touch with the father of the children. You can put a guardian in place in your will. And that's very important. You also want to put some trust language in your will. Should your child inherit before they turn the legal age here in Maryland, it's 18 different states, may be a different age, but you want to prepare just in case when you're a parent, mm -hmm. you definitely want to have a will when you have children. And I think, and I think it's such a, such a disadvantage. disadvantage. In and, in and, in and, and I see I so, see so want to go to go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they really have no directive as to what's supposed to happen. And children are typically left with either sometimes loved ones or put in a system. And, you know, if you love your children, if you love your family, then a will, life insurance and all of that stuff. Put your life in order. Organize your house now <laughs> How you can. Put your life in order while you can. And it's about legacy building. And you don't have to, like we both said, you don't have to have millions. Whatever you have is enough to pass down, but you want to do it in decency and in order. Because typically it goes to the state. If there's no directive, typically it goes to the state, depending, I'm assuming, which state you live in. Well, it won't necessarily go to the state, but it will go according to the state laws. The state mm -hmm. laws have something called um, succession. So mm -hmm. they have an order of how people may inherit. And some states may say, if you're single, um, all of your assets go to your parents. And you may not want that. Maybe you want it to go to your siblings. Maybe you want it to go to the next generation, your nieces and nephews, so they can go to college and give them a leg up. Mm -hmm. So, um, Or you may want half to go to your parents and they have to siblings, mm -hmm. or a quarter to your parents and a quarter to your siblings and a quarter to your nieces and nephews. But in any event, that would not happen if you don't have a will. Right. Or you can put it towards an organization, too. I've seen. Yes, people do absolutely. I've seen plenty of folks leave money to charities, their church, mm -hmm. um, sororities and fraternities, mm -hmm. um, HBCUs. Um, I've also seen people leave if they had cancer or if they had a child that had some sort of a disease, leave money to those medical um, foundations. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot you can do if you have a will. And it doesn't have to be a lot of money. Right. I've seen people leave money in a um, for scholarship for the next generation, and it can be ten thousand, fifteen thousand dollars, but that's a lot for a young person who may need books or who may need, um, you know, some things going off to college. So there's a lot of things you can do when you plan ahead. Exactly. That's, that's, a, that's a great point, especially if you're like a family mm -hmm. where people right. are working. So we so kind of have to in our family. family. Yeah. So. so. That's a That's great break. Another, Another thing I'll bring to your attention. Oh, no, there's an echo. <laughs> Did you hear that? Yes. <laughs> okay. Another thing that I want to make mention of is that you stated that, um, you know, about the cancer and things. We, we see that so much more. And 
is it good? Because I know as far as insurance, if you wait to that point to get it, insurance is very expensive, you know, when you get it, like if you're ill. So at that point, because we never know what's going to happen in our lives, we can only live healthy and try to pray that we never get those debilitating diseases. Right. So, and at that point, that's why another reason why a will is so important to put in place. Yes, you have to put the, pill, the the will in place when you are mentally competent. Now, having cancer doesn't mean that you're not going to be competent because I have had plenty of clients come with cancer, stage four cancer. I've also had older clients come, 80s, even a 90-year-old client who was very, very mentally astute, and surprisingly so, amazingly so. So it depends on the person's circumstance, but if they're mentally um, incompetent or getting dementia or, or, or um, Alzheimer's, they can't do it. No, no lawyer is going to do that if they're not competent. No ethical lawyer is going right. to do that. Right. Yeah, we want to make sure we have integrity and ethics in everything that we do. So right. amazing. I'm like so flabbergasted with all this information to help empower people to get their life in order. Um, you know, we all want to live a full life, but you can live the best life knowing that you've taken care of your business on this side instead of waiting to, until you get to the other side. Absolutely. Yes, 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 yes. Well, thank you so much. Can you tell us one more time how we can get in contact with you uh, via all your social pages and your website? Yes. Social media is at E. Brown Legal, and I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Then the website is ebrownlegal.com. And the phone number is 301-352-8960. Well, praise God. Thank you so much. Thank you, Michelle. It's such a blessing to have this podcast. Yes. I've had it for over a year and it's been going great. I mean, I told you we've had over 10,000 downloads. Subscribe to the People Connect podcast. You can go to iTunes, iHeartRadio, and Google, or you can go to bit.ly forward slash the number two, Excel with Michelle, and you can learn more about what I do, how I can help you excel in your life. I too am on IG, on Facebook, and on Twitter at Michelle Womack. That's who I am. So <laughs> again, Attorney Brown, I am so grateful, so thankful that you took time out of your day, your busy life to come on here to share this information with our audience. And I pray as well that they receive it in good tidings and good joy. It was my pleasure. I always say I am blessed to be a blessing and sharing information is me giving blessings out to other folks. Amen. To whom much is given, much is required. Right. <laughs> On that note, blessings and peace unto you. Until next time, again, go ahead and download us at iTunes, iHeartRadio, and Google. Until next time, blessings and peace unto you. Thank you for joining in. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Michelle, bye-bye. Thank you.